Nobody buys anything anymore. Have you heard that? In fact, nobody ever bought anything, did they? You go to the mall and you say, I'm going to buy a shirt. And what do you do when you get to the mall? Do you buy a shirt? Or do you choose between 50 different shirts at the mall? So the question that we want to tackle today for you is, why is it that a customer will choose you versus all the other options out there? How are you going to create something that's different? There's one thing that matters to all businesses. It matters to your business. It matters to service businesses, to manufacturing businesses, to tiny businesses, and to billion dollar brands the same. And this, if you do nothing but this, your business will have an opportunity to succeed over time. Be different from competition in a way that customers value. I spent my career doing marketing and strategy for billion dollar brands. And what I realized was that any company of any size can use the same strategies we were using to grow their business regardless of their budget. Your brand resides in an individual's mind. And people start to gather information the same way they gather information about everything else in their life. Who they're going to marry, where they're going to go on vacation, what kind of car you're going to buy. You gather all this information, you put it in your head, and then you make a decision, a belief about what you think. And this is what your customers do about your companies. The biggest thing that differentiates billion dollar brands from all other companies is that they spend an inordinate amount of time listening to their customers. So everything that you do, everything that your drivers do, everything that your website does, everything your customer service agents do, all of those different touch points for your brand determine whether or not they're going to vote for you with their dollars. If you get more clear on who are your ideal customers, you will find more of your ideal customers and you will make better advertising that draws in more of your ideal customers. It's great to have advertising. It's great to have things on the side of a truck. It becomes real for the individual. In the early 1980s, there's, there's a Harvard professor, the first ever female tenured professor at Harvard, sociologist named Ellen Langer. She did a study about the power of because. So she had a student walk up to the front of the line of the copy machine and see what percentage of the time the student could cut in line. And the first time they did it, she had them say this, excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? 63% of the time, they let the student cut in line. Then she had him go up and say something else. She said, excuse me, may I use the Xerox machine because I'm in a rush. 94% of the people let him cut in. Now, if you're paying attention, you're like, yeah, but you gave him a good reason because you're in a rush. So she said, let's say something totally nonsensical. May I use the Xerox machine because I need to make copies? 93% of the people let him cut in. Now, why does that happen? We're bombarded with advertising messages, 500 to 3,000 a day in our country. And your brain is looking for a way to navigate to things that actually are credible. And it works if you give a reason to believe. What is your reason why I should believe? You say you build better relationships with people. What's your because? What allows me to believe the benefit that you're telling me? The concepts that I teach are simple enough that they can be put into action immediately, but they're powerful enough that these are the same things that have grown startup companies into billion dollar brands. I'll give you a case study about this. So here's a free fitness podcast. You sign up on iTunes. Every two weeks, he sends you a free download of fitness music. CEO is one of my clients. He comes to me and says, I need to get more people coming to want my music. And I said, well, what need are you solving? And he said, oh, I'm solving, I'm solving the need of people who want music that's 120 to 150 beats per minute. <laughs> so I, I never really thought about my workout music in those terms. Do you have any feedback? Like I say, get your customers to give you feedback. He said, yeah, yeah, I got all this feedback. So we took all the customer feedback and we put it in that hierarchy. And the music, what we found out is the price of entry has got to sound good. And it's got to be free. OK, great, because that's what competition is doing. And then they, he said, well, it's got to help me work out longer. It's got to be for my sport. If I'm a runner, I want music designed for running. But then they gave him all these emotional needs. Oh, you know, when I listen to your music, it helps me escape. It helps my workout be more fun. It helps my workout be easier. 
he changed all of his advertising to talk about the emotional benefit. What if your workout could be easier? Yes, it can. Here's why your workout is easier with our music. He got flooded with people who wanted their workout to be easier. What are you doing to put your message in terms of what the customers want from you? Not talking about your product, but talking about the need that you're fulfilling for your customers. We had a year-long argument on Coors Light as to whether cold beer even made any sense. How can a beer be colder? That's absurd. What if it's as cold as my refrigerator? It's as cold as the bar cooler that they pull it out of. If I buy it at the convenience store on the stack on the floor, it's warm when I buy it. How in the world? That's stupid. But what if it wasn't? What if you said, you know what? We know that that's what they're saying they want. What if our beer could be colder? What would that look like? What if you could create something different from all the other distributors and have every person in your organization talk about it the same way every time? What would that look like? Well, for cold beer, here's what came out of it. We looked at our target, 21 and 20. We looked at their needs. We looked at the benefit, cold beer, and we said, that's different. But why would they believe us? Why on earth would someone believe that their beer is colder? Here's what came out. The Frost Brew Liner can that someone in the room said, well, it keeps your beer colder, right? But in addition, we had other innovation. When we got clear about what we were doing, and who we were, it exploded the sandbox of innovation. We came out with a cooler box, which is an 18 pack of plastic bottles with essentially a garbage bag in it. <laughs> but it keeps your beer colder, work with me here. Cold activated bottle. The label turns blue, so you know when it's cold. It's pretty close, right? Kind of, and, and, and the bottle's blue, which means cold, right? Cold activated can, super cold draft. Beer doesn't freeze at 32 degrees freezes at 27 because it's got alcohol in it. So we can pour beer below freezing. The innovation box exploded. You know, success isn't in doing the most or having the best idea. Success is in choosing the right things to do and navigating so that you provide something special and different for your customers that they'll pay for and that they'll tell other people about. You don't need piles of marketing books. There's a handful of key strategies that are the underpinning of all successful businesses. Whether you're a product company, you're a service company, or something in between like a restaurant, the same strategies apply and work. The innovation you do around that thing that people really, really want allows you to give that message in every single thing that you do. We started that ad campaign in 2006. Coors Light sales are now $250 million a year higher than they were in 2006. And it keeps going like this because we found something that people care about that is uniquely ownable by us.